interviews. My conversation today is with the author, uh, um, Catherine Erskine, and the author illustrator, uh, Keith Henry Brown. And it's so good to have both of you with me today. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, this is the book we're going to talk about today. And um, my dad is a DJ, is, is, was a fascinating read. And I was so glad that uh, when I was talking to Kathy about this, that she suggested we do a conversation um, about this uh, children's book. Because, and as I read it, I was, I was uh, fascinated because language, music has been one of the ways that I've communicated with my oldest uh, child. My oldest child, I was uh, telling, is a music educator who taught at the university for a few years, but is back teaching music um, in the elementary school, which he loves much more than trying to make music teachers. <laughs> he likes doing that. And um, I've had him come into my class and talk about mashups and mixing music. And so I was reading this really fascinated with the way that which a father and a son are struggling to communicate through music. So um, Keith, tell me a little bit about how you approach working with an artist or a writer that you've never met. And how did you guys come together in writing such a wonderful um, children's book about families and music? Um. I think Catherine probably has had, because she's more experienced than me in doing books, that she probably has also had the experience where you don't meet the other side of the <laughs> creative team sometimes until after the book is done. And I even know people who've never met them or many years after, um, especially if you live in different parts of the country. Um, so it, it was, it, it, I hate to say it, but it was sort of a normal situation. Yeah. Um, I had my first book that I illustrated, um, the author actually lived in the same city as me, but I still never saw her until after the book was done. Um, I always wondered if the publishers, for their own reasons, uh, wanted to keep uh, the two creators separate, um, maybe because, you know, the editors and the art directors are working with you, and they just want to be able, they, they kind of edit uh, people's thoughts, I guess, and, and go back and forth. And then they, that way it's no one person's, um, uh, I guess, influence over another. That's how I thought it was. I really don't know. Uh, I've only been doing this since 2019. Huh? So uh, even though I've got about five books out, um, I've, I've been busy. <laughs> I mean, I keep a, I well, a and, job and after and everything I, else. So. After I experienced this book, I hope you stay busy. I, I think the oh, art is is really nice, and uh, and there's a lot of things going on here. So, whose idea was the book in the first place? Is is this a Kathy book, or is this a Keith book, or a Keith Kathy book? How does it play <laughs> well, out? Well, we were thrown together for another book that didn't materialize, and then we're told, mm -hmm. "But we would like you two to work together." And I said, "Well, okay, Keith, I don't really have a story right now. Do you have any ideas?" And he <laughs> came up with. A bunch of ideas and I love this one because it is uh, taking the topic of divorce which is common and so many kids go through and you know connecting with a parent and and like you say connecting over music and uh, both your sons right Keith are very musical and mm -hmm. uh, so you're you're all very connected that way. Yeah it, it was um, it was an idea the thought I had that I wanted to do, I don't know that I could have done it without Catherine because it was very hard to figure out how to make it work as a book, but it's personal experience. Um, I have two sons. Um, we got divorced and, you know, they ended up leaving and moving to another part of the country. So it's it was very difficult for me to, for me just in general, because I missed them, but also because, uh, you know, I wasn't able to have that daily uh, you know, kind of interaction with them. So what ended up happening was uh, they both love music and I love music and I was always playing it when they were children and, and listening to the background and we would just talk about music and, and on the phone or they would play when my oldest son, whose name is Satchel, he was play a new song as a guitar and say, dad, listen to this and tell me what I thought. And 
and you know, and it was just this sort of a thing that we 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 have. That, you know, and now my oldest is now a professional musician. He's in several bands. Yeah. He makes his living for music. The youngest one is going to uh, California University of California, and he's studying music composition. He has a record out. Just came out a week about a week ago. So they're both performing musicians, and but this all came out of our constant like if we couldn't think of a nails to talk about. We would always say. Hey, have you ever heard this <laughs> record? Or, and we would just kind of go back and forth. But I was trying to figure out how do you condense that relationship uh, into, because I'm not a DJ. It's a funny thing. I remember I do readings uh, at schools or something. Somebody says, are you a DJ? Some kid like that. <laughs> but, I, but I'm not. I'm more of a facil facilitator of, and lover of music. Um, and I didn't know it was going to rub off on them. And I didn't know that they were going to end up doing it for a living. Um, but it was also the story, as, as Catherine beautifully wrote uh, in the book, about how these two people stay connected through music, you know, and, and how I stay connected with my voice. I don't know how it would have worked without it. Not to say that it wouldn't have, but it was such a special bond. You know, all three of us could just talk endlessly about a bass line or about a songwriter we liked or or about how something was arranged their musical thinking became sophisticated very quickly and now surpasses mine because they read music and they study music and they, but at, in the beginning it was me just talking about what made me feel yeah that's that's fantastic i i'm, I'm feeling a lot of empathy with that and, and my my son is we've done a couple of articles together where I trace the use of young adult uh, music in a young adult novel and what activities a teacher could do. And, and I think, oh, we, they could listen to this. And he goes, no, they could create this. They could do this. And, you know, mm -hmm. So the activities are enriched because, but because what he can see kids can do in ways that I would never see what kids could do. Right. And so he's, uh, he's really helped me facilitate um, how I think about music again, like, you know, my ability to read or, perform music in any way is severely limited compared to what what Isaac can do with that. So I, I love that. Well, yeah. I, and I'm going to... As a matter, fact, as matter of fact, you're talking about how kids can do things. He, they both taught themselves piano and guitar and uh, all different kinds of instruments from YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> which That's didn't even exist. Yeah. And, and through, I guess, you know, lots of practice, but they, they taught themselves and now they're playing at professional levels, which is insane to me, but I yeah. could never even, yeah. be. if I decided today, oh, let me get on YouTube and learn how to play guitar. Not going to happen. <laughs> Not going to happen. I can tell you that right now because <laughs> I could barely play chopsticks. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just recently took up ukulele as a thing to, um, you know, just to try be a little creative and to, uh, you know, memorize music mm -hmm. so to help my brain and all mm -hmm. um so it's a it's a concert you can i play classical but um but i have to take lessons i'm really <laughs> so i just can't imagine just picking it up from youtube oh yeah. i should it, it, it's magical yeah. it's magical yeah it's it's uh, well you should join my son's fifth grade class because their project every year that's going to happen after the first of the year is with fifth graders he has them uh, not only learn to play the ukulele, but they build the ukuleles. Oh, so wow. every kid gets a ukulele kit, and they oh, build the ukulele, and then they play it. And, and he's finding they have a lot more success if he can fund a ukulele for each kid, right? And then they build it, they own it, they learn to play it, and, you know, then it becomes something that they they take that's, on. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. So mm -hmm. maybe he, we should invite you and Catherine as a guest concert to uh, ukulele <laughs> class. So practice up, practice up. <laughs> yeah, sounds intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> a room for ukulele players. <laughs> <laughs> sounds intimidating. Well, Keith, have you always been an illustrator and a, and a artist? Is, so you say you've only been doing books for about four or five years. So what's your trajectory to get to writing? books like this um I, I will yeah i was i was always drawing i, I hate to say it, the cliche but i was real super into comics mm -hmm. um I, and i love comics and i used to draw my own comics when i was a kid um and i was definitely one of those kids like all the other kids were out playing outside and doing this and that and i was reading books and reading comics um and drawing them and um so i decided 
to go to, there was a school in New York called the High School of Art and Design. Mm -hmm. um, and I got, accept, me and my best friend got accepted to go there. I went there. Um, and while I was there, I, you know, they had this program uh, for kids who wanted to work in Marvel Comics or DC Comics. Oh. And I got in. And at first as an intern, and then I worked for them right out of high school for like about four or five years. Um, it was a little too much for me. I wasn't mature enough to handle the deadlines and things. Um, so I didn't stick with it. And also, I wanted to expand it. I, I wasn't happy just doing other people's characters. I wanted to do different kinds. I wanted different kinds of challenges. I didn't like the idea of just drawing the same character. Every, even though I love comics, it's not the same as actually drawing them. <laughs> you know, it's work, you know. And, and, then, and if it's a completely their property, and, like, you do a comic, and it's done, and then you know, that's all theirs, and then you get paid a flat fee and whatever, you know, I just wanted more of a, or, you know, some more of something ownership, you know. So then um, I went back to school, I went to Parsons, and um, and I learned illustration, and I came out of there doing greeting card illustration and magazine illustration, and I did that for a while, and then I kind of leveled off on doing art at all, because I got married and I had to get a regular job and I started working in retail and I started doing less of that. And then I moved to Louisville, Kentucky. My ex-wife is a professor at U University of Louisville. And I taught myself graphic design. And then I started hiring illustrators. Um, and then sometimes I think, hmm, I could do that. <laughs> you know, I've been drawing for a long time. Why don't I hire this guy? I'll do it myself, you know? And then I ended up coming back to New York as a creative director for Jazz Lincoln Center because I was very interested in music and jazz in particular. And uh, then I started really thinking, I really want to do this illustration thing. Yeah. And I kind of started getting jobs. And, and then I decided I want to do one big project, which was to do a graphic uh, novel about this fairly obscure jazz musician named Eric Dolphy. And I was I was trying to get it out there. Somebody said, "Well, you got to find an agent." And I said, "I so I went on and got an agent." And she said, "You know what? Forget this graphic novel business because you're not. We're not going to be able to sell it. But I like your drawing, so maybe we can sell you as a children's book illustrator instead of doing this graphic novel." And right at the same moment, just uh, kismet, um, somebody. It's I also did a lot of album covers for different jazz musicians. Oh. Somebody saw one and said, do you think you could do this for a whole book? Because we want to do a book about, we got a script about uh, Miles Davis. And I said, sure, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so I did it. And I, I, it was it was hard, you know, because I'd never done a children's book before. And I, I hadn't done storytelling type drawings in a long time because I've been doing just, you know, individual illustrations. And the book did okay. And then by the time I finished that one, I got offers to do the next one. And that's around the time that I got the, uh, that they paired uh, Catherine and I on this book that ended up, as she said, getting canceled. But yeah. we, I loved her writing um, on the script and I really wanted to do something. And to be completely honest, I thought that because the other book didn't happen, that we were going to have to give the money back. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I didn't know, but nobody told me. Later, I told, "Oh, you didn't have to because you could have just they would have just banked it and told you to do something else later." But I thought, "Oh my God, I don't want to give the uh, thing back." So I had I had a few things in, in the drawer that I thought maybe someday I wanted to do, and 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 Catherine liked it, and that's where that ended up. This is great. And this is I the you'll know the page, but the page where there's kind of a miscommunication i turned mm -hmm. that page and just my my heart left because i saw that miles <laughs> davis album and that marvin gay album and i went oh i know exactly who this dad is this is you know this, this is me right i because this is music i grew up on and even though i was never a big jazz kid i always mm -hmm. knew who miles davis was in the mm -hmm. background of soul music and you know, mm -hmm. hovering around Stevie Wonder and Mar and Marvin Gaye. Miles Davis has always been in that hovering place, sure. right? Sure. Um, so even those of us that were listening to a lot of soul music in the in the late 60s and early 70s, you still knew Witch's Brew. You still knew what was happening. So I saw those things and then mm -hmm. all the other references. You know, I was getting them as I went through this book, but this became an adult book for me. I, you know, the references <laughs> for, for all these other songs, I, I thought, oh, I can hear this happening. And yeah, that's I, all because I just, I'm old. 
I'm very old, that's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I love that nod to a different generation of readers with those album covers on the floor, right? That That's a really smart illustration. Um, I was very lucky too that they let us use the actual. Use the, yeah, I was. I thought they ask about that. Yeah, yeah. The, well, it, I just did it and said, "Well, all they can do is tell me I can't do it." And and yeah. then they, the lawyers checked it. They said, "No, you can just tell them." And it was like it's not, it's not going to. I guess maybe a collage type attitude. I don't know. Yeah. So I was so happy that I could use the actual ones, and it was so fun yeah. to see it. Oh, ones. it's it was it's brilliant because I think it tells that story. Um, in, in fact, in some ways for me, as the father and the son, you know, the kid is sitting with his basketball and the, and the dad is sitting with his uh, record player. And then these albums are this bridge in which the kid doesn't want to discard the music. He just wants to do something additional to the music. Right. And I I think uh, so. I love that picture. I, I, I love that picture. And Thank this you. is one of the books I'm often invited to go to. Um, zoom in and book talk with my grandchildren's classes you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and uh this is a book i would certainly take with me uh, either on zoom or in person because i think it the the illustrations are rich i think you guys have really done a bang up job with the book about Thank like you. you say divorce i hope, and, I hope Catherine and i will get to do another book together because i really love the results uh, that would be awesome <laughs> That would be awesome. You know, last week uh, I was at a school here in Brooklyn um, called Arts and Letters, um, and uh, I, I, it was one of those situations where I didn't I didn't check that much about where what it was going to be like. And I show up, it was a huge assembly. It was like three hundred kids, um, and I get in front, and this is the book that I plan to do. And uh, I really had never talked about it in front of very young kids in a group, large group before. And I was a little bit nervous, um, but they really had fun with it. And I was really surprised. And the kids asked questions about, such brilliant questions about everything, like about why why is Trevor and his dad not together? Why, uh, how come uh, Trevor's dad didn't like, I mean, his, his, his Trevor's music. And I was really surprised at how kids, much kids related because I, I you, you don't know, you know, Catherine, maybe you can, uh, chime in but I, I when i'm doing it you know you don't really know what kids reactions are going to be so mm -hmm. when i when they like it i'm always like like you know thank god you know because i don't really know because i just try to you try to just pitch into your younger self and hope this is the kind of book i would like but i don't yeah. know maybe i'm maybe I'm, I'm out of touch so Catherine, how did when you yeah you should weigh in about this story here's a black dad and a black kid talking about music from a different era. So what's your connection to all of this? <laughs> well, that's what I said to Keith. I said, oh, I'm glad you're writing with me because I, it's the time a middle-aged white woman. I can't write this. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, my parents divorced. I mean, I remember when I was 10 being called into the living room and my dad saying they were going to get divorced. And it, it took years, but, at, but I was always living with that. I knew it was going to happen. And, um, so I, I think so many kids are exposed to that, that, uh, yeah. it's a topic of interest and I think it's important to have a book out there. And like, like you said, Keith, to have not the absent black father, uh, but, but the family together. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's really important. Mm. Yeah. And making those connections uh, and there, there is the nod to the mother, trying to encourage them to have the communication within the book, right? Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, I think that was really important. And by the way, my wife really appreciated that uh, when she saw the book. I didn't even tell oh. her I was doing it. I didn't show it to her after it was published. But um, I thought it was really important to to point out that it wasn't like this. That we're, It's about still keeping the family together, despite yeah. the, the change. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's... There's a lot of richness in that and to do that. Yeah, what you guys just need to do is think of the the next thing that they'll let you do, right? It, yeah. <laughs> I wish I don't I guess I guess it wouldn't be right to talk about it, but it was a really fun project, right, Catherine? And you had worked on that book for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And... Picture books for me are so much harder than a novel, really. I mean, because really? every 
Yes. Every word is so important. I mean, it's, it's just, you got to encapsulate a whole scene in just a few words. Mm -hmm. And there were, I don't know if you remember this, Keith, but there were a couple of times where I was like, this just doesn't sound right. I don't know. I wrote this sentence. Mm -hmm. I can't. It just, and mm -hmm. so I would ask Keith and he would say, well, how about the word this? And I'd be like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. It's so great. So you guys, uh, would you draft back and forth or did you do some yeah, I think call, phone forth. calls? It was back and forth. Back and forth and, and, and then edit. Yeah. I, I would say as far as the actual final script is Catherine was more responsible because I kind of wrote like a, I guess you could call an abstract mm -hmm. or, or or a synopsis I don't and then she kind of laid the whole thing out and then we just sort of fine-tuned it together yeah, um, yeah, so yeah the picture the, the music did you storyboard it did you storyboard it so that you could say no not, not, in not in the beginning need to go not in the beginning not in the beginning um yeah, I think it was it was it was very collaborative. I mean, it's funny that we talk about it now about how collaborative it was, but when you're doing it, and it, and it took a while, you know, it took yeah. it over time because we were doing other things, and I think maybe the pandemic was part of it. I don't remember now. Maybe it was before the pandemic, but I just it kept remember getting delayed. Yeah, it kept getting yeah. delayed, um, and I remember the the book company itself was was kind of slow in responding sometimes to publisher. Um, you know, I remember there was a point where I was worried that it was never going to happen because it was taking so long. Yeah. Um, and not because of either of us, I think. I think it was more because, I don't know, maybe we had other projects that they were working on. Um, so when it, when it really looked like we were coming to the finish line, I couldn't believe it. I was so happy because this is the first book that I was involved with the writing of and it wasn't about, this is the first book I did that wasn't like, not only scripted, but it wasn't like the most of the books I've done so far have been about like famous people or, or something, you know, like one was about John Lewis, one was about Miles Davis. And it was just so nice to do something that was just about these, you know, characters that, that Catherine and I came up with. <laughs> I remember for the longest time we didn't have a name for Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and we just kept saying the boy. And we the never boy. Did, Yeah, we never came up with a name for dad. We never called him anything but dad. Um which I think I'm fine with, um, but I think I think Trevor came out of the fact that I was reading the Trevor Noah book. Ah, oh, yeah. At the time, um, and then I, I said it as a name, and you and you liked it, so it, that that's how it worked because it was very inspirational. That oh, book, and I think you said you had read, read it too, right? I love that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it just felt, it's, it's it fantastic. Felt right. It felt right well, for the project. Yeah. Yeah, well, this this uh, I would encourage anybody, you know, to get a copy of this book, and and experience this relationship between Trevor and his dad. It's it's really um, a great book, and it's been fantastic to talk with the two of you about your process and um, what you've achieved, and and I hope more people find it as we go forward. Appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.